welcome back to it. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the curly girl method. The curly girl method is an approach to other hair care routine for natural curly hair. And the curly girl method, it feels like you enter a different universe, I have to say. Like, it sounds weird when I say it like that. But the approach, so the curly girl method, what is it? The curly girl method was founded by Lorraine Massey. She is the co-founder of Deva Curl and she is the founder of Deva Sean Salons in America. And at the moment she is also, she also teaches the cut to cut trimming. So what it is, is the hair tech is the cutting technique for curly hair because with curly hair you can't cut it like straight hair because if you do that all the lengths go weird because like as you can see here with my curly hair it's all at different lengths because of the curl type the shrinkage on that with that you've got to cut curly hair in its natural state not when it's straightened because when it's straightened and you cut it it will all just look funny in a way and it make it may make it look more lead than it should whereas with cutting curly hair the technique Lorraine Massey teaches is by cutting on the S loop so as you can see here when I stretch out my hair I've got like these S sort of loops here sort of also Z -y looks as well and you'll just cut like that but of course a professional, when they do it, they do it in an amazing way where they just like cut and they just know where to cut, which is phenomenal. So only do it when you're confident. I will admit I'm not confident with cutting my own curly hair. When I used to do it before, when I was transitioning, it worked because of course I knew like the damaged ends that I need to get rid of. But then after that, it was just, it's too much. It's better for me to go to a hair salon that knows what they're doing. But she is also launching a new company called Curl World. I follow them on Instagram, check them out. And yeah, like this woman's on a roll, isn't she? But she is the founder of the Curly Girl Method. So with the Curly Girl Method, um, you can find some more information on Google. You can even purchase her book as well, which is called the Curly Girl Handbook. I've read it and it is quite good as well if you are looking to do the Curly Girl Method. So. The curly girl method, this is an approach for hair care for natural curly hair. So this is care that is just like in its natural state. So like my hair, hair that hasn't been altered in any way, such as like chemically processed or relaxed. So the curly girl method is also seen as a way as a no poo method because it discourages using shampoo in your curly hair. And it also discourages other things that you shouldn't use with natural curly hair. So to ensure that the curls really just get defined and really moisturise. So here are the things that you do need to avoid during the curly girl method. First one is heat. Second one is sulfates. Third one is non-water soluble silicones. <laughs> I'll do that again. Non-water soluble silicones and alcohol, fragrances and combs and brushes. These are the things that you shouldn't be using during the curly girl method. And in the curly girl method as well, it does a three step hair care routine. So the first step is cleansing your curly hair, wavy hair and coily hair. I'll give a breakdown of all of those. So with the cleanse, so step one, I'm gonna give a breakdown of wavy hair as well as curly hair and coily hair. So with wavy hair, you want to cleanse your hair once a week and you would use like a no poo cleanser or a co-wash cleanser, um, depending on like what you need at the time. And with curly hair, it's the same advice as well, um, to do at least once a week or to do it every 10 days with like a co-wash cleanser, um, depends on your curly hair needs. And then with coily hair, they suggest, they do advise to not cleanse as much as wavy and curly hair to reduce the amount of times that you do cleanse your hair and also in between co-washes as well. And also when you're cleansing your hair, you are focusing on your scalp here. So you would apply the product 
onto your hands, fingertips, and then just move it and massage it into your hair like this. Not like this with your nails because your nails will damage your scalp and that will prevent um, hair growth because you're altering and interfering with the hair follicles in your scalp. Whereas with this, when you're gently massaging it, what you're doing is you're lifting and removing the residue and um, any sweat, which sounds gross, and oils from your hair or oils that are not needed in your hair that need to just be rinsed out. And doing this will help cleanse your hair. So always just focus here and just fingertips, not nails. So conditioning, step two. So with a conditioner, um, wavy hair, you can, of course, apply your conditioner in. And when you rinse, you want to rinse it, but leave a little in, because you want to leave some moisture in your curly hair, because that will help define the curls and keep your curly hair, your curly wavy hair moisturized. Same with curly hair as well, to do the same. Um, with curly hair, you can leave most of it in but still rinse some out because again you want to leave it moisturized and allow the curls to be defined and with coily hair you want to actually leave the conditioner in your hair for about 15 minutes and if possible choose like a heat cap so you're allowing the moisture into your coily hair and then once you've done that you want to rinse it out completely and then step three the final step is the styling and drying so with the styling process the only products that you need is a styling cream or like conditioner and a gel and then once you finish applying those products into your curly hair the drying process before you do that with wavy hair you want to scrunch it and you can do that with your hands or with a microfiber towel and or what you want to try and do as well if you want to get the more curl wavy definition is you can like pin at your roots I think that's what you can do and with curly hair and um, this would be the same as well you can use like a scrunch with the microfiber towel to just help dry out the hair and also when you finished drying your hair what you can do is like move your hair forward like that and then you can just like fluff at the roots so it can give it more volume with your curly hair and with coily hair, what Lorraine suggests is that you can just do like a wash and go and then style it however you'd like. Um, for all curly hair types, especially coily hair, Lorraine mainly suggests to just avoid heat as much as possible because of course heat damages your hair and of course it will alter the curly hair pattern and the curly girl method won't be as effective as it would be with natural hair because it's designed for natural hair. So I hope that gives like a good nice breakdown of what the curly girl method is. And of course with the hair drying process, you can of course air dry, which is um, one of the most popular ones, especially during spring and summertime and a little bit of autumn. But of course, for the winter months, of course, drying, air drying your curly hair isn't great because of course, when you go outside or if you do go outside during the drying process, you could ca catch a cold, which you don't want. For the winter months where you do want to dry your curly hair, what you can also do is use a diffuser. So if you can get something like this and attach it to your hair dryer, is another alternative to drying your curly hair and of course diffusers are amazing because they don't smash not smash they don't frizz out your curly hair diffusers are great because they don't frizz your curly hair whereas with just like this your hair can easily get all frizzed up because of course the air is just blowing through your curly hair and where it's all not being controlled in a way and it's just going anywhere, it's removing and separating your curls and that's what will cause the frizz. Whereas with this, as you can see, it's all, the air would come through here. So it's all very controlled, allowing 
your hair to stay intact and allow the curls to stay intact as well so it doesn't cause the frizz. That's that part of the curly girl method. Of course, with curly hair, we do need to clarify our curly hair because we are always putting product into our curly hair to keep it moisturized as much as possible. And of course, after some times, it does cause buildup. And to get rid of that buildup, you need to clarify your curly hair. So the one method that I did like, the technique that I liked from the Curly Girl Handbook when I was reading that book before, was to use some bicarbonate soda, and I, I think it's also called baking soda as well. Mix it with some water in a spray bottle, or you can just like use it in a bowl, mix it all together. And then you would pour it over your hair, massage all over your scalp, and then you rinse it out, and then use your cleanser as normal, and then you would do step two and step three of the Curly Girl Method to clarify your hair. Um, another popular alternative as well, if you, if you don't like to do it this way to clarify your curly hair, alternative is apple cider vinegar. And I know like, oh, I'm not sure if you heard that, it sounded very frizzy. Oh my gosh, that vinegar like just goes straight up there and it goes through your whole body, Jesus Christ. But this works really well for clarifying your curly hair. And of course it does smell very, very strong and you don't want that smell in your hair, I will admit, like no one wants to smell like vinegar walking around. Um, so you would just use a little bit of this, like fill it up to here, and then dilute the rest of water, spray all over your hair, um, especially into your roots, so you can really just get all that residue, that dirt, out of your curly hair. And of course, to get rid of this smell, and of course to get rid of the clarified cleanse of this amazing vinegar, you would just use your cleanser again, and follow step two and three of the Curly Girl Method. So yeah, that's a good rundown of what the Curly Girl Method is. It is just like a no poo cleanser and avoiding heat and of course sulfates, silicones and parabens, alcohols, combs. I have done a post on Instagram. If you go to my link down below, um, you'll come across my profile and you will see a purple post that says Curly Girl Method um, approved products and I do go in a bit of depth of what the Curly Girl Method is. I also do have a highlights video of on there as well of the Curly Girl Method. One thing you do need to know before you start the Curly Girl Method, you need to use a sulfate shampoo. Yeah, you do need to use a sulfate shampoo. The reason why that is is because where a sulfate shampoo is so cleansing of everything you need that because if you have never done the curly girl method you might have used products that do have non-mortable non-water soluble silicones such as demiflicon i think i pronounced that right <laughs> and of course silicones is a ingredient that is great for detangling your curly hair however what happens it coats your curly hair so if you try and put anything else um, into your curly hair of another curly hair product and you think it's moisturizing your hair it actually isn't because that silicone in your hair is not allowing anything to come in so the only product that will be in your curly hair is a conditioner so with that that's why it's important to use a sulfate shampoo only one more time before you start the curly girl method to just completely strip everything out any harsh ingredients in your hair that might still be hanging around that you do not know about it's like a complete restart button and then once you've done that get rid of that shampoo and start following the curly girl method and yeah that's on that bit with the detangling of course shampoo things like so brushes like these are discouraged in the curly girl method so the alternative for this is to actually use your fingers 
to detangle your hair. So they call this, of course, you might have heard the term already, finger detangling. So the benefits of finger detangling is you're working your way through your hair in each section and you're doing it in a gentle way because of course it's like this, like doing stuff like this. Oh, come across one already. So sort of not, but you would have to just work your way through like that. So you're not tugging at the hair and you're not like pulling anything out either because you're just gently working your way through. And another benefit as well um, of finger detangling is it's allowing the curls to be more chunky. So you're having more curls staying intact. Whereas a lot of people, not a lot, some people say with using a brush, it's making them come out all thin. I, of course, as you probably already know, I do not really follow the curly girl method, not as much as I used to. I have picked and choose some things from the curly girl method. I found what works best for me. So I do a mix of finger detangling and actually using this. I don't use this every day actually. I only use it about once or twice a week, but majority of the time once a week on my wash and go days because I find that my hair, I might have said already, is is does get knotty sometimes to the point that it's like really bad knots, which is awful. And I prefer to use this to make sure that I am really just getting rid of any knots and preventing any knots any further. Because when I did finger detangle before, it was great, I will admit, but there was a really bad knot, I'll never forget it, and I had to work on it for 15 minutes of just that one knot. And that was a case of like, taking this hair out, getting that hair out, trying to move it along, getting another hair out, getting another hair out before I could just completely get rid of that knot. And it was just a lot of hard work. Whereas with this, I can just, I don't use the whole brush. I probably just try and get a few bits like these to just really get into that knot that it could easily separate the hair a lot quicker. Because of course the circumference of this compared to my finger, this is a lot smaller. It could just really get into those hairs and remove the knot. Whereas my fingers can't do that. So that's the only, of course, do with the curly girl method. I don't, I do like to use a brush, I will say. Another thing, of course that I do like to do with the curly, I don't really follow properly of the curly girl method is I do like to use a shampoo and a sulfate. This is a sulfate free shampoo though. So I do, and I am very, very into avoiding harsh ingredients in my curly hair because that is one of the things I have noticed doing the curly girl method. Like the benefits of my curly hair is just phenomenal after following that method. So that's the one thing I definitely do recommend to avoid harsh ingredients and trying to find natural good hair products like Shea Moisture. This is probably, this brand honestly is one of the best brands out there for curly hair. So I recommend if you're looking to go natural and you're also looking to try and start following the curly girl method, look at Shea Moisture. Also do look at David Curl as well, because I did use David Curl um, during the Curly Girl method of the No Poo Cleanser. Like, that cleanser is really good. I found a really good shampoo that works for me and it clarifies my curly hair. I use this only once a month. I don't use it all the time. And it also, because of course it's the Strength and Grow and Restore range, it cleans my hair, it helps promote hair growth because there's a peppermint and the Jamaican black castor oil as well that helps promote um, the Jamaican black castor oil helps make my hair look thicker so I found this works best for me so find what works for you but if you are looking for a clarifying shampoo that is also sulfate free I recommend this one best one out there and it's a really good size bottle too that it will make that it will last a really long time. For step three, if you're looking for a styling cream or a gel, these products are really good. 
So this is the, the Shea Moisture Curl and Style Milk of the Coconut and Hibiscus range. Is really nice as a styling cream. I think this is great for all hair types really. I think wavy hair and curly hair and coily hair, this is really good. And this gel jelly is really, really good. Like, I love this product, but find one that works for you. I think Kinky Curly is a gel that I've heard a lot of people say is really nice and works really well. The Shea Moisture Curl Souffle is really good. Um, you can try that one out. And the Cantu Curling Custard is also another good curly hair product to try out as well for the gel side of the styling process. But yeah, that's the Curly Girl Method. I hope that gives a nice good summary of the Curly Girl Method. I wanted to provide a video for people who are looking to go natural. I wanted to know what the Curly Girl Method was because when I first started looking into Go Natural, this was one of the things I didn't know about for a little while, and when I, when I tried to research it and understand it, it took me quite a bit of time, but I hope this gives like a good summary and breakdown of what you need to do and what you need to look out for. Of course, try it out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't work out, don't worry about it, because what you can do is just pick and choose some things that you enjoyed from it, and then just go from there and just find out what works best for you because at the end of the day it's your natural curly hair journey and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel as i upload new videos every saturday and of course don't forget to follow me on instagram my link is down below and also my tiktok videos as well where i'm also just showing my box braid hairstyles again on there of giving a breakdown and yeah i hope you guys are having a good week and i'll see you in the next video bye